February 22, 2002, Jonas Malhero Savimbi was killed in a gun battle with Angolan government forces in the forest of Angola's eastern Mohigo province. Prior to his demise, Jonas Savimbi was the leader of the National Union for the Total Independence of Angola, UNITA. He initially expanded his small band of supporters into a guerrilla group and was based in the southeastern part of Angola. He relied mostly on the Ovumbundu people, the largest ethnic group in Angola. His struggle as a guerrilla rebel leader can be traced back to 1966 up until 2002 when he waged a full-scale guerrilla war against the Portuguese colonial rule followed by a confrontation with the People's Movement for the Liberation of Angola, MPLA. This was known as the Angolan Civil War. At various intervals, Jonas Savimbi obtained support from China, South Africa and the United States to help counter the Marxist and Soviet-supported MPLA, which controlled the central government. In 1991, a peace agreement between UNITA and the MPLA-led Angolan government was reached. This halted the civil war and resulted in three multi-party national elections in 1992. UNITA lost the elections and resumed their military struggle for the control of Angola, with UNITA occupying most of the countryside. A second attempt for peace to prevail led to the Lusaka Accord of 1994. Hostilities were to cease and forces were to be disengaged with the president of Angola, Jose Eduardo dos Santos, offering Jonas Savimbi one of two vice presidential positions. UNITA was also to be part of the government. This was rejected by the UNITA leader and was officially designated as the leader of the opposition in 1997. This contract was however abrogated in 1998. However, in 1996, Jonas Savimbi had made clear his intentions to retain control of the lucrative diamond regions in northeastern Angola, although some were transferred to the government in 1998. In the midst of these developments, mountain opposition was building up within UNITA. In 1998, a group calling itself UNITA R suspended Jonas Savimbi and became the self-declared leadership. From this stage onwards, UNITA was split into three warring factions. The Angolan government and the Southern African Development Community recognized UNITA R as the official representative of UNITA. Despite this, Jonas Savimbi requested the renewal of negotiations in March 2001 and he further indicated the willingness to accept the terms of the Lusaka Accord. The government, on the other hand, demanded a ceasefire as a condition for initiating new talks and Jonas Savimbi called for the Roman Catholic Church to mediate the dispute. With all this effort at peace taking place, fighting continued throughout 2001 and spilled into the neighboring countries of Zambia and Namibia. On February 13, 2002, Jonas Savimbi made a call from his forest hideout in eastern Mohigo province, eight days before Jonas Savimbi was killed in a clash with government troops in the same region. Another call was made by a member of a UNITA military unit protecting Jonas Savimbi to Paris the day before Savimbi was killed. The call was made from roughly 70 kilometers from the area where Jonas Savimbi was killed. Unknowingly to Jonas Savimbi and his group, Israeli intelligence expert aiding the Angolan government with the help of sophisticated technology were tracking his movements and location. An Israeli drone also cruised the skies of eastern Angola tracking United troop movements and attempted to pinpoint Savimbi's whereabouts as a result of the calls. Tens of thousands of civilians were forcibly displaced from their homes in areas located by this intelligence, apparently in a bid to deny UNITA vital civilian support before launching an attack on his colon. After depopulating the area, Angolan forces finally succeeded in tracking down and cornering Jonas Savimbi in the forest of Mohiko. His exact position was given away by the signal from his satellite phone.
the army caught up with him after killing two of his most senior officers, Brigadier Imbule and General Big Boy. The latter's death was a serious setback as it deprived Savimbi of diversionary troops who had until then concentrated on attracting attention away from their leader. Jonah Savimbi was further weakened when he lost important means of communication by radio. Jonah Savimbi was not easy to catch. He knew the area very well. He was like a fish in water. He tried to lay false scents with diversionary maneuvers such as crossing various rivers including the Louvay and Luang River. The Angolan rebel leader fought until the very end, says officers who described their final gun battle with the man who spent most of the last 40 years in armed conflict. While he returned fire, his wounds proved fatal. He died almost instantly. The 67-year-old Unita leader was killed alongside 21 of his bodyguards on the banks of the Luve River in the eastern province of Mojico. Jonas Avimbe was shot a total of 15 times, once in the throat, twice in the head, and the rest in the chest, legs and arms. Jonas Savimbi had a battle plan, but this failed him because he had lost radio communications following an army offensive dubbed Kisonde, named after an aggressive ant. He only had a small ground-to-air radio. This factor blocked any chance Savimbi had to get some security from parallel units which would have allowed him to cross the stretch of the river up at the border with Zambia. The Angolan army soldiers had waged a tough battle to penetrate deeply enough into the rebel forces stronghold to reach Savimbi and the guards who surrounded him. Savimbi had used his gun in a vain attempt to starve off the army attack only 80 kilometers from the Zambian border. Jonas Savimbi had built a mystical reputation for eluding the Angolan military together with the Soviet and Cuban military advisors. This therefore led many Angolans to question the validity of reports of his death in 2002. The Angolan government therefore transported television crews to the site of his final battle to film his body in order to convince the skeptical Angolan public that the apparently indestructible rebel leader truly was dead. Not until pictures of his bloodied and bullet riddled body appeared on Angolan state television and the United States State Department subsequently confirmed it did the reports of Savimbi's death in combat gain credence in the country. Six years later, on 3rd January 2008, General Savimbi's tomb was vandalized and four members of the youth wing of the MPLA were charged and arrested. His family and UNITA officials had demanded his reburial for many years to no avail. The impasse was broken after his longtime foe, Jose Eduardo dos Santos, stepped down as president in 2017. Now to Angola, the body of Jonas Savimbi, the historical leader of the Angolan Rebellion Group National Union for the Total Independence of Angola, UNITA, is to be exhumed and reburied with dignity. His successor, Joao Lorenco, agreed to their demands and his body was exhumed in 2019 with DNA tests confirming his identity. He was reburied publicly near his father with no Angolan government official attending.